thing that you want to do is of course get yourself a new project and we're going to set this to 4k 60 fps and you can set the audio duration to the same as your song you can also use 1080p if you want to now there'll be links down below on this video to all the project files if you want to follow along with this tutorial and this will allow you to simply drag and drop this into your timeline and we're going to start on the background first and we're just going to apply a simple Gaussian blur. If you search for it in the effects and presets, you can apply it onto your background. And we're just going to set this to around, let's say 300 for the blur. We can also apply a solid above the background to any color that you want. And we're just going to drag it on top and we can press T for the opacity and lower this to 50%. Once you've got yourself the background, we're going to focus on the record first. And if you select the record, we can press P for the position and we can move the slider over to the left and have the record on the left side. Now for the record, I feel like it's appropriate to also have the cover and we can do this by using the shape tool. You want to set any color that you want and make sure there is no stroke. You can then left click hold shift and drag this out to get yourself a perfectly even box. We can center align this by pressing control, alt and home. And we just want to reposition this box right here. Now, the reason why we've done it this way is because we can now go ahead and copy the picture of the artist. We then want to pre-comp this shape and call it photo. You want to move all attributes and then press OK. Once you've opened it up, we can press Ctrl or Command and V. This is so that we can paste it into here. And if we unhide this layer, we now have the picture of the artist right here. And the great thing about this is that we can lower the opacity so we can overlap them on each other and reposition the artist in the picture frame. From here, we can set this back to 100. And to crop this photo, all we need to do is drag this down to this shape right here. And now we have a perfectly even crop. If we go back onto comp one, you can see we now have the record. So in order to animate the record, we're going to select it and then press off the rotation. We can set a keyframe by left clicking on the stopwatch. We can go further out and then set this to 360 degrees. What this will do is it will give us a full spin all the way around and then it will stop at this keyframe right here. So in order to loop this forever and for the end of the project, we can hold Alt and then left click on the stopwatch to get ourselves an expression. Now in here, you can simply type in loop, out, and then brackets. If you left click off of this now, you will see this will now loop forever until the end of our project. Now to create the audio spectrum, we must have at least a solid and we can call this one audio spectrum. You can set it to any color that you want. It doesn't really matter, but then you just want to press OK and move this layer above and underneath the record. We also need to apply a audio spectrum effect on this layer. There we go. We now have the settings for the audio spectrum. But the first step is to link up your audio layer to your music file. This will make it so that the audio spectrum will react to the beat of the music. What we're going to do is we're going to start on the color first and set this to a white color or any color that you want. We don't really need the softness, so we can set this one to zero. We want the thickness to be five so we can see it better. And then we're also going to turn this into waves by adding in 2000 bands. 
So basically what this does is it fills in those gaps with more audio blocks. We also need to change the maximum height to 2000 so we can actually see the animation better. And then we're also going to change the end frequency to 211. Now, the lower this number is, the bigger or the longer the waves will be. So for example, as you can see right now, they are longer, but if you wanted them to be thinner and have the big peaks, you would simply increase this number. We also want to change the side to side A only. We don't need it at the bottom. And we can also change the audio duration to 120. Now, what this one will do is this one will pretty much create a little bit of a delay between when the peak goes up and then it comes back down. This just makes it smoother. But we also need to make sure that the start point right here starts right here. So we're just going to move this over to the right until we can see the audio spectrum. We're also going to expand the end point. What we can do now is we can press Control or Command and D to get a copy of it. And we're just going to move this one underneath the main audio layer. What we're going to do now is we're going to lower the opacity down to 50%. And we're going to create that ghost in effect that you can see in the audio waveform. Now for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to slightly delay it and change the settings. So we're going to change the maximum height to 1500 set the end frequency to 150. We're also going to change the star frequency to 30. We can have a look at this now and see what it's going to look like. So let's say we wanted a title, we would get ourselves the text tool. We can right click on the song, go to rename and copy the name of the song. And then if you left click on here, we can paste in the title of that song. We can get rid of the four at the beginning, get rid of the mp3. We can also press Control or Command and A to select it all and we can change this to a bold font and we can reposition this. We're also going to add in a subtitle so you can press Control or Command and D and with this one we're just going to move this one underneath the title we're going to rename this one and we're just going to type in by and then artist name. And for this one, since it's a subtitle, I'm going to change it to a lighter font such as Nexa Light. And this makes it look so much better because it looks like a subtitle. And now if you want to, you can also add in a progressive bar at the bottom. For example, this one is super simple to create. All you need to do is get yourself the shape tool. What you would do is you would simply left click, drag this out and align it to the same length as your audio spectrum. We can then make this a little bit more thinner. So right about here. And then we're just going to press P for the position and move this one underneath. Now for this one, we can change the color to a gray color. This is going to be the base color. And we can also duplicate this layer and set this to any color that you want for the progressive color. And then from here, we're also going to get the little circle. You can get yourself the eclipse tool. Make sure you are not selecting any layers and drag and drop yourself a circle shape. Now for the circle, I like to have the same color right here, but also a stroke just to make it more visible. And we're just going to scroll up and press H to move around. And we can just reposition this circle right here. Now, I like to position mine with the picture frame. And what you can do is you can change the position. Now, with this shape, you want to make sure that the anchor point is in the center. So once again, we're just going to center align the anchor point. And now we can animate this by going to the start of the video. You can get yourself a keyframe with the position right here, go all the way to the end, and then move the slider until you reach the end of the progressive bar. And there we go. This will now animate it 
and move along with the project. Now at the moment, the red line is visible and what we need to do is we need to select the shape tool, set this one to a mask. And we're just going to mask out the color so it only reveals once it's gone over it. Now to do this, we're going to get ourselves a box right here. And then you want to get yourself a position mask, go all the way to the end, get yourself the first tool, left click, drag this out and select these two sides only, and then move these all the way to the end. And if we have a look at this now, you will see this will move along with the progressive circle. And then finally, the very last step is of course, if you wanted to add in a timer, this one is really simple. You would get yourself the text tool, left click on here and type in 00, colon 00. We're just going to reposition this. And in order to create this timer and to make it work, we need a slider control. You want to apply this onto your text layer. And if you scroll down on this video, I will have an expression on the comments. You want to open this up, hold in Alt, left click on the stopwatch for the source text, and you can paste in that expression into this box right here. Now yours may have an error straight away, and this is because you also need to go to File, go down to Project Settings, and you want to make sure that the expression is set to Legacy. This will make the code work, and all we need to do now is set the first keyframe to zero, go all the way to the end, and then move the slider until you reach three minutes and 38 seconds. And there we go. As you can see, we now have the audio waveform with a timer at the bottom. You may also like this next video up on the screen, but until next time, I'll see you all in that next video. Bye.